Excellent. Well, thank you for the invitation to be here today. Uh, today, I hope to entertain you with the thought that Queensland could be a hydrogen superpower if we can grasp this opportunity. Along the way, I hope to highlight some key areas that you, all as outstanding researchers and industry leaders, might contribute to that aspiration. But first, I'd like to acknowledge uh, the traditional custodians of the land on which we work and live. We recognise and appreciate their deep connection to land, water, culture and community. We recognise Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people as Australia's first people and recognise the enduring and positive contribution their voices, traditions and histories made to our communities and our business. We pay respect to Elders, past and present, and extend our acknowledgement and respect to all our Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. Our assets are located uh, on Durrumbul country, on Waka Waka country, and Turrbal country. And I'd just like to highlight this wonderful piece of artwork that David Williams uh, has contributed to our organisation. So thank you for coming today. I feel a little overwhelmed by the company I'm in. Uh, I certainly don't have the academic credentials that most of you have. However, I have been in the renewable energy industry for longer than it's been cool to say so. My journey in renewable energy started in a fairly glamorous place. Uh, my first job was at a tip. Yes, an actual rubbish tip. And you can imagine what mum said after four years of university study uh, when I told her that my first job was at a tip. At the job interview, I was asked, do you think you could figure out how much methane might come out of this tip? I thought it was a trick question. <laughs> no one had ever done this before. The company, though, went on to become one of the first renewable energy companies listed in Australia. At my Stanwell job in this interview, I was asked, do you think you can create a business in hydrogen? I definitely thought that was a trick question um, because no one's had a hydrogen party quite at the scale that we're proposing at Stanwell. So who is Stanwell? So just a brief overview. So Stanwell is a Queensland government-owned corporation. Uh, so technically, we're owned by all of you. We run two large coal-fired power generators in Queensland. And we have a mandate from the Queensland Government to transition out of coal and into renewable energy whilst keeping the lights on. As a coal-fired generator, we have, uh, in fact, a world record for continuous operation uh, of a power station. And, and that is something that we're particularly proud of. And we are on a fantastic journey here to create one of Australia's largest renewable energy portfolios and perhaps develop a hydrogen project that might rank in, in the global ranks uh, in terms of its capacity. So as you can see on the slide there, we're a Queensland-based company with um, a large portfolio of emerging renewable energy and hydrogen assets. So in terms of what we talk about today, I'll talk very briefly about the energy transition and how hydrogen serves as a key pillar in this um, shift. I'd like to explore Stanwell's approach to integrating hydrogen into that energy portfolio. Also, I'd like to talk through what is involved in establishing a hydrogen business. And um, this will be something that I think will be key to understanding our approach to it to this point. Then I'd like to talk about how we guide innovation in this hydrogen sector. And I'm hoping that's of keen interest to the audience today like to talk about the role of universities and CRCs in driving this innovation um, through the hydrogen industry locally. And then finally, I'd like to give you a quick run through on the initiatives that we're undertaking uh, to position Queensland as a hydrogen superpower. Okay, so let's talk briefly about the energy transition. This is a topic worthy of a whole lecture, but I'll touch briefly on it. So in terms of this, I guess I've been in the industry long enough to see the highs and lows of climate change policy over the last 30 years. Action, then inaction, 
they're more action. I guess the lack of progress in terms of emissions reduction has probably been a function of not having the appropriate tools at hand uh, in a very fragment, fragmented industry. There's been no momentum. It's a bit like riding a bike. When you ride a bike slowly, it's actually very hard to control. You need to get it up to speed. And once it's at a certain speed, the ride's a lot smoother. That's what we need to do in this industry. This time it feels like we've got some traction, especially in regards to this net zero target. So this has become a guiding ambition, I think. And the good news is, as you can see on that map, 88% of all countries have committed to a net zero target. Astonishingly, even China has done this. And they've committed to a net zero target of 2060. So there's very definitely cause for optimism. The bad news, of course, is that we're well behind where we need to be. And you can see from this graph, the trajectories are too slow. We need to go quicker. So let's have a look a bit more locally. So here in Queensland, uh, last year, the Queensland government launched the Queensland Energy and Jobs Plan. Why is this relevant? It's our mandate. It's what Stan Rolls mandate um, comes from. It's a very ambitious goal to achieve 70% renewable energy by 2030 and 80% by 2035. These ambitious goals will need to come with a build out of renewable energy zones. And we will need in that context, a super grid. Who wouldn't want a super grid? The Queensland government will fund this energy investment and support the hydrogen industry. In particular, it supports the project that we've got underway in Gladstone. So specifically for Stanwell, um, our progress towards this, these targets are, are uh, substantial and we're well underway. So we'll have a key role in Queensland's economic and, and energy transformation. So by 2035, we estimate we are going to need 9 to 10 gigawatts of renewable energy. That'll be a mix of wind and solar and 3 to 3.5 three gigawatts of energy storage. Now, remembering we currently run about 3 gigawatts, a bit over 3 gigawatts of coal-fired power station. So the numbers are fairly substantial. But also remember, we're also developing a large hydrogen electrolysis plant. This also requires a lot of renewable energy. So you can pretty much double the targets that I've got on the screen there. And that's why I think you'll see there's some clues here as to where the innovation in our industry needs to come. Okay, a question I'm asked uh, regularly is why, why hydrogen? It's a great question. The short answer is it's incredibly versatile fuel. Just because, however, we can use it doesn't mean we should. So we think that hydrogen needs to be uh, and its value is greatest when used in the right applications. And most of these applications will be where using electricity directly uh, or in a battery is really hard. So those hard to abate areas. So hydrogen is a clean fuel when it's produced from renewable energy. It can be used for transport, power supply, industrial processes such as chemicals. And Stanwell's journey into this hydrogen space really started with the thought that whilst it's fun to build a massive renewable portfolio, it might also be good to develop some loads that can run on that renewable energy. And it turns out that scale is really, really important in driving the cost down uh, for hydrogen. It also turns out that our international trading partners in Asia are really looking for help on their decarbonisation journey. They are resource constrained. They don't have the footprint or the space to develop the renewable energy they need to decarbonise. And we already provide to them a lot of energy in the form of LNG and coal. So hydrogen can form the basis on which we help to decarbonise our large trading partners. So, so Samuel really, I guess, has jumped over that piloting stage into a large export project because our partners are looking for that support uh, in decarbonising their hard-to-abate hard sector. The other use for hydrogen is in um, energy independence. Can you imagine a world where the reliance on Middle Eastern oil is significantly reduced? 
Australia currently has about 24 days of petrol stocks. We have 20 days of diesel. We have 24 days of jet fuel. So even though the current government has legislated an increase to that, it's really just a few days around the edges. So I think we've got a pretty reasonable case here to be exploring electric and hydrogen transport on the basis of our energy independence. So I think there's a, a great and compelling case to consider hydrogen. And one of the key questions would be, how do we take advantage of that opportunity? How do we create the jobs and opportunity for innovation and technology advancements? And that requires us to establish a hydrogen business. So what's involved with a hydrogen business? To become a hydrogen superpower, we need to do a good job of establishing a hydrogen business. So what do we need? First thing we need is abundant resources. Thankfully, Queensland's blessed with an abundant renewable energy resources. By harnessing our wind, solar, and our planned hydropower uh, the potential, we can produce green hydrogen at a scale unmatched by many other countries. Remembering that 60% of the cost of hydrogen comes from electricity. So we need lots of it and it needs to be cheap. We also need water. And that's definitely a challenge, but one that I'm confident we can solve with our uh, Australian innovation. In terms of infrastructure, we pretty much need an infrastructure revolution here. A comprehensive infrastructure network will be the backbone of our hydrogen superpower status. From production facilities to a network of pipelines, we need to build this foundation for our hydrogen economy. We need to get that abundant electricity to where we want to use it. And so we need a huge investment in that transmission infrastructure and probably a big investment in pipelines as well. And we also need that port infrastructure if we're going to export this to the rest of the world. In terms of job creation and economic growth, if we don't do this, I guess the question would be, what's the point? Our journey to becoming a hydrogen superpower is not just about the clean energy, it's also about building a stronger economy. The hydrogen industry will be a catalyst for job creation, creation of new opportunities and economic growth across various sectors. And this is a key benefit that we need to realise uh, from entering into this business. We also need uh, good policy for progress. No new industry has ever started without good policy support. To catalyse this transformation, we need to enact forward-thinking policies. There will need to be incentives, subsidies, and a clear regulatory framework to empower businesses to embrace these hydrogen solutions. Our global partnerships are, are critical. Queensland will not do this on its own. We actively need to seek partnerships and collaborations with nations that share our vision. Together with these trading partners, we can create that interconnected global hydrogen ecosystem and drive the progress on an international scale. And this is exactly the same trajectory that the LNG, LNG industry took. And finally, and most importantly for this audience, our cutting edge research and innovation will be a commitment that we need to drive uh, our hydrogen excellence. And so investing our brightest minds and fostering that collaboration between academia, i.e. all of you, and the industry will propel us towards the forefront of hydrogen technology. Okay, let's dive in a little deeper. Okay, do we have enough abundant resources? I, I, I would say we do. You can see from this uh, graphic here that there's no doubt that the resources exist. The sum total of those numbers on the, on the left-hand side there is 44 gigawatts of renewable energy capacity. And this has been estimated just in the central Queensland uh, renewable energy zones. Uh, that's a mind-boggling number. And if I'd suggested uh, to a, a forum in industry 20 years ago that we would have this amount of renewable energy available, I think I'd be laughed out of the room. And, and, and the key question is, well, how, how do we think we can manage this? And the answer is the innovation in technology. So 20 years ago, uh, when solar PV was $18 a watt, a young bloke told me 
that within 10 years it would be a dollar a watt. And I told him he was dreaming. Uh, today I owe that young man uh, an apology because we are definitely at that space. So this is the benefit that you get from those innovation opportunities in renewable energy and the, the intersection between renewable energy, electricity, water and hydrogen will be a key place for us to focus our innovation efforts. In terms of our re revolution in infrastructure, across the board, we need to up the ante on our infrastructure. Water, ports, rail, telco, roads, and most relevant for our hydrogen business, transmission infrastructure. So you can see on the right-hand side there an image of, of PowerLinks, uh, another Queensland government-owned corporation, uh, their plans for the Queensland supergrid. So our electricity system will become increasingly decentralised and this transmission network must evolve to transport that renewable energy around the state to where we need it. So we need to accelerate the supergrid. And the pic here shows you the plans that are in, in place and we need to execute these plans very well. And I think we also need to think more innovatively. Perhaps we need to think outside the box around alternating current and towards direct current. For 10 years now, my friends at QUT have been coaching me in superconduct, superconducting cable technology. I've reached that point now where I have electrons sending me memos about this, but I'm none the wiser in terms of the physics. But I can tell you the practical application of these sorts of technologies would be a game changer in our industry. I believe we need a strong, flexible hybrid grid. Perhaps we need to stop thinking about moving only electrons and perhaps we move some molecules as well. And it's that intersection between hydrogen and electricity, which means we could convert to hydrogen when the renewable energy is abundant and cheap, and uh, we could start to build our hydrogen business um, off the back of other products such as power to gas or power to liquids. The next thing we need for our hydrogen business is jobs and skills. So we need a workforce for this business. And in a job, tight jobs market that we're in at the moment, how do we inspire this next uh, new workforce? I've been told that the only reference in Australian school curriculum at the moment to hydrogen is the Hindenburg. Helpfully, it comes with a photograph, or not helpfully, perhaps. And I have uh, an outstanding um, young graduate at Stanwell who completed his chemistry, uh, chemical engineering degree here, and he tells me that the amount of hydrogen that appeared in his course was, was very minimal. So we need to correct that. One of the best things I did this year was to support the inaugural Hydrogen Grand Prix, and this is a fantastic program aimed at schools and run by Horizon Education. So in this program... High school students are provided with a remote control hydrogen kit car. And they have four months to build this car for an endurance race, which occurs at the end of, of the four months with other school teams. They make the hydrogen from a fuel cell. Uh, well, sorry, they make the hydrogen from a, a little electrolyzer and, and then store it in a metal hydride canister. And then that hydrogen is used to power the car. They can modify the car in any way they like to make it more durable and for, it, for the endurance race. So about six weeks into this uh, program, I, I met the teams that we'd sponsored and the boys had organised themselves into a into a into like a Formula One team. So I met young Jordan and Tyler and I asked them what their roles were in the, in the team. So Jordan's role was as pit crew. I said, oh, that's, that's great. And what about you, Tyler? And he said to me, I'm the ideas man. And it turns out that Tyler actually indeed was an ideas man. And what he had done was that he had gone uh, and ordered some materials for his 3D printer to make new tyres for this car. And so I'm hoping that it's activities like this which will inspire the next generation uh, of the workforce. And we definitely need more, more tyres in our workforce. So we need to inspire this new workforce in the industry. And a great opportunity exists for upskilling and reskilling our existing workforce. We need our teaching institutions to add more content and focus more on hydrogen and the associated industries. At Stanwell, in our hydrogen team, 
we not only have engineers and scientists, but we also have lawyers, accountants, procurement specialists, project managers, just to name a few. So what else do we need for our hydrogen business policy? We need to take advantage of the opportunity that we have, and we need great frameworks for, for industry to do that. So Queensland's made a great start in this regard. We have good hydrogen policies here, but we need to do more. The Australian government is refreshing their hydrogen strategy and has recently closed expressions of interest around what they call a hydrogen head start. This is a $2 billion program to incentivize large scale hydrogen production. However, it is important to note that an equivalent scheme in the US has put somewhere in the order of $369 billion dollars US towards exactly the same incentives. So we've got a lot of work to do in the policy front. In terms of our partners, you can see that Sandwell is working with some of the biggest energy players in the world. We can't do this ourselves. Japan and Singapore are resource constrained economies. We currently help them with their energy needs and we, we see them as long-term trusted trading partners. We can in the future help them decarbonise their economies with renewable hydrogen. Now, what's the final ingredient for our hydrogen business? Research and innovation. And this is something I'm particularly passionate about. We need to bring the bright minds of academia and industry closer together uh, if we're going to take advantage of this opportunity. At Stanwell, I propose that we needed to create a precinct that could help engage our communities, provide workforce training and skills, and to undertake world-class commercial scale research. We needed faith, the future energy innovation and training help. And yes, it does help if you pronounce it with an Irish accent. This is something unique that Stanwell can actually bring to support the innovation that we need. As I said to our business, before we take the keys to a shiny 200 ton a day plant, Maybe we should get some operational experience with some smaller equipment. So that's exactly what we're planning to do. This site will complement the facilities that universities and research facilities across the country who currently operate at what I would describe at kilowatt scale to test and validate opportunities at larger megawatt scale. So what would such a thing look like? So this is a power is a lesson in the power of an image to fight the imagination. So this is actual photo of our Stanwell power station with an artist impression overlay. It was hugely expensive to do, but on a per year basis, uh, this is cheap as chips. This has been used over and over again. This has been so convincing uh, that I'm regularly chastised by our engineering team about the scale of that wind turbine in the picture and how close the solar panels are together. But the point is here that we need to guide this innovation in our sector. This site will be a place where we will assess, uh, measure and validate, extrapolate, refine and ultimately endorse technologies that we will use at commercial scale. The first thing that will turn up at this precinct are, in the first instance, a novel iron flow battery chemistry. So this is a technology that's been licensed from the US, but it has local assembly in right here in Maribor and Queensland. And we'll also source the electrolyte locally. The second innovation is uh, an electrolyzer uh, from the Heitzada company. This technology came out of the University of Wollongong with a forecast efficiency of more than 20% better than anything else that's on the market today. So this is something that I learned on a recent trip to the US. There's not an electrolyzer technology company in the US that hasn't got a close association with a university and a, and a lab. And this is something that we need to replicate here. And finally, our long-term existing relationship with Central Queensland Uni, a dual sector university, will assist us with skills and training, hydrogen research and techniques to support our social licence to operate. So a bit of guidance around where I think the innovation and research focus areas should be. 
So in hybrid production and storage, there are only two places where knowledge exists at the moment. One is with the original equipment manufacturers or OEMs, and the other is in universities. So this is something that we need to extract and collaborate to, to gain additional experience in hydrogen production and storage. Things that we are interested in are improvements to electrolyzers, which is the device that splits the water. We need things that reduce the capital cost and things that reduce the operating cost. We need novel or step changes in conventional technology which lead to these efficiency gains. We need to explore alternative materials. Um, we need to look at the shared infrastructure processes up and down the supply chain. And we need to look at the scalability and balance of plant development. We also need, um, as I've talked before, about the development of skills and training frameworks. There's a huge amount of work to do in the water space. Alternative sources of water, non-potable water, seawater, wastewater, novel me methods of treating water, membrane distillation, algae-based treatment perhaps, sustainable reuse of processed water uh, for integration into shared infrastructure, integrated system support, balance of plant optimization, modelling and optimization of renewable loads in electrolyzers, all worthy research areas. Social licence. We are actually faced with, um, you know, the industrialisation of our landscapes and communities need to see the benefits of this flowing into their region. What we need to happen is to address these concerns in our communities. So when we, we, when we engage with our communities, what they're concerned about are roads, telecommunications, hospitals, medical centres, schools and accommodation. None of those things are things that Stanwell does. So how will our development support these activities? And we also need to be mindful of the cumulative impacts that, that occur. So it's a bit like negotiating a complex commercial deal. You know, you want to see the full terms before you agree to it. And I think that's something that's incumbent on us as an industry to do. We need to master plan these things. Um, we, not, we need to do these things not uh, project by project, but in a, in a greater master plan concept. Our transmission infrastructure. We need to do a great job around that master planning. Otherwise, we'll end up with duplicated infrastructure. We need to integrate regional development plans. We need to do baseline studies so that each proponent doesn't turn up and have to do the same thing over and over and create that fatigue within the community. So some of the benefits for regional communities are, are huge. I know for a fact from our projects, the revenue streams for um, from hosting wind farms uh, can be life-changing for farmers. And long-term revenue streams that are now uh, independent or become independent of the boom and bust agricultural markets are something that is a game changer for um, our host um, uh, landholders. So where to from here? We've talked about our strategy. We've had the why for hydrogen. We've had what we need to create a hydrogen business. So what have we been up to to progress this opportunity and set ourselves up for success? So this is our Central Queensland hydrogen project. What we hope to do here is to build up to 800 tonnes a day facility that will really rank in the top 10 global hydrogen projects. We're working with our domestic and international partners across the supply chain to develop this opportunity in Gladstone. Our project consortium consists of some big names in Iwatani Corporation, Kansai Electric Power Company, Marabeni, ourselves, and Singapore-based Keppel Infrastructure. We're currently undertaking a front-end engineering and design study for the project, and we hope to build um, a hydrogen production facility a hydrogen gas pipeline and liquefaction plant, as well as supply hydrogen to an ammonia production facility that will be built in, in the area. The front end engineering and design study is a really substantial commitment. This is a $117 million study. $82 million will come from our consortium members, $20 million from the Australian Renewable Energy Agency, 
and $15 million from our own Queensland government. So this is a really substantial commitment. We commenced that feed study uh, in, at the end of May, and so we're a few months into it. We think we have this project in the right location. You can see from this graphic that we have the land, we have the industry in the local area, and we have the port access. Hydrogen in our project will be uh, produced and piped to both an ammonia plant uh, for domestic and export use, and also to a liquefaction plant at the port. Our Japanese partners are interested in liquefied hydrogen for power generation to replace that LNG that we currently supply to them um, out of Queensland. And our Singapore partners are looking to use the ammonia for power generation and potentially for ship bunker fuel. So let's zoom in a little closer. So here's an aerial view of the project and the indicative routes for the hydrogen pipeline, the location for the hydrogen liquefaction facility and the power infrastructure. So you can see here on the left, the land uh, footprint for our hydrogen production plant. And the yellow line is the um, proposed pipeline route for the hydrogen, uh, gaseous hydrogen pipeline. Uh, we have transmission infrastructure um, planning underway with our friends at PowerLink. And we have uh, a large uh, solar farm, which will be the solar component of the renewable energy. The wind component will come from other parts of central Queensland and will be transmitted there through transmission infrastructure. There's also a water source uh, allocation from the Gladstone Area Water Board um, and, and also a planned uh, common user infrastructure around processed water. So we think we've got the foundations for creating a viable large-scale renewable hydrogen supply chain. Uh, the Gladstone Port and the state development area there currently already exports in the order of 24 million tonnes of LNG. So it's already a major energy export hub. We think hydrogen production should be undertaken in hubs where an industrial ecosystem can be created. And the Queensland government has reserved a large state development area for these future industrial processes. It's also really important to be close to your, to your markets. And Gladstone uh, is a, a very well located um, port for, for energy exports. Just to give you an indication, uh, Japan's demand over the next uh, 10 years will be targeting 300 million, 3 million tonnes of hydrogen. By 2040, they're seeking 12 million tonnes, and by 2050, they're looking for 20 million tonnes. Stanwell is developing with his partners one of the biggest hydrogen projects in Australia and will produce about 250,000 tonnes per annum. So this is a tiny proportion of Japan's uh, sovereign targets that, that, that we will provide. So in terms of renewable energy supply, we've got over 12 renewable energy zones in, in Queensland and the central Queensland zone uh, zones alone will be sufficient for the renewable energy for our project. We also have great regional community and government partnerships. Um, and we'll still, but despite all this, we'll still need a lot of support to kickstart this industry. So how are we progressing so far? So this is where we're up to. Have the land secured back in 2021. We've commenced and finished our feasibility studies. We've got access to the renewable energy, both with the uh, local solar farm, but also with the, the wind resources. And we commenced our feed study uh, in May this year. We're expecting our final investment decision uh, at the back end of 2024. And then over the next um, uh, 10 years, we'll build out the commercial operations with the first commercial operation date in 2028. So what is the regional benefit profile look like? Well, firstly, you can see from this graphic that a huge number of jobs uh, will be created by this opportunity, almost 9,000 jobs. You can also see from the economic impacts that the total value of what this project will bring to Queensland is really substantial. So a really important project. Okay, so let's bring this home. Did I do that? <laughs> Oops, I did. Yeah, 
sorry about that. Excellent. Excellent. All right. So we've talked about the strategy. We've talked about why and why hydrogen. We've talked about the elements of the business, uh, hydrogen business that we need to create. And we've talked about what we've done so far. So let's wrap this up with a little scorecard. How are we going? Abundant resources, full marks. I think we have all the resources that we need to do this to become a hydrogen superpower. In terms of the infrastructure revolution, we do need a comprehensive infrastructure network, and that will be the backbone of our hydrogen superpower status. More work will be, need to be done in this regard. In terms of the job creation and economic growth, well, our journey to become a hydrogen superpower is not just about that clean energy. It's about building a broader and stronger community uh, ec economy. The policy for progress, um, a good start, but more needs to be done. And to catalyse this transformation, we need those forward-thinking policies, incentives, subsidies, and a clear regulatory framework. Global partnerships, again, we think we've got full marks on that regard. We have the right partners in our um, sphere to take advantage to create this interconnected global ecosystem. And then finally, the cutting edge research and innovation. And so our commitment to this research and innovation, I think, will be a driving force behind our journey to hydrogen excellence. Investing in the brightest minds and fostering that collaboration between academia and industry will really propel us to the, to the forefront of, of the hydrogen sector. So overall, I would say better than a pass mark, more work to be done, but a great start. This opportunity really is here for Queensland to grasp. We have all the ingredients, we have the smarts, and I hope you go from this, uh, this lecture today with the thought of being inspired to get involved. I say Queensland can be a global hydrogen superpower. And I guess it's up to you what you think. Thank you very much.